Hi and welcome to the second class of time, speed and distance. I hope you have watched the first class and gone through all the concepts, practiced questions and done some more questions. In the first class, we had discussed the basics of time, speed, distance, including the units to be used and how units can be converted, how you can convert kilometer per hour to meter per second and vice versa. We discussed the question of average speed, the concept around it, and we solved some questions. Today uh, is the most important class of this topic where we'll be touching upon and going deep into the concept of relative speed. Okay, so listen carefully, have your pen and paper in hand, write down, take notes and uh, stop, pause, rewind, watch again, wherever you want to go through it again. Okay, fine. So basically, what is the concept of relative speed? Relative speed refers to the speed of an object with respect to another one which may be stationary or moving in same direction or opposite direction. Most of the cases it is moving because if it is stationary then I don't really need relative speed. So we normally apply relative speed when two bodies are in motion in the same or opposite direction. Okay. When objects are traveling in opposite direction, then with speeds of u and v, then the relative speed is u plus v. And if they are moving in the same direction, then the relative speed is u minus v. It can be kilometers per hour, meter per second, whatever. What does this mean? Let's take a very brief example to understand this. Let's say A and B are two stations. A train starts from here at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Another train starts from here at a speed of 30 kilometers per hour. Okay. And this distance is 200 kilometers. Okay. So now, if you see the distance between these two trains is 200 kilometers to start with. After one hour, this train would have covered 50 and this train would have covered 30. So the distance between them will become 120. So 200 has reduced to 120. That means they have come 80 kilometers close to each other. That means together they have covered a distance of 80 kilometers, which is what is u plus v. Okay, so together they have covered a distance of 80 kilometers or the gap between them has reduced by 80 kilometers. It does not matter who has covered how much together, they have come 80 kilometers closer. Hence, their, the distance covered by them, both of them together is 80. How much each one of them have covered that of course also we can find out because the time is constant here. Both of them have traveled for one hour. So the first train has covered 50 kilometers and the second train has covered 30 kilometers. So the distance will be split in the ratio of their speed because time is constant. Hence distance is directly proportional to speed. Okay. So that is what is relative speed. So relative to each other. Now if you assume that a person is sitting in the first train he will see the second train approaching him at a speed of 80 because for him he will assume that he is constant and this is something that you would have seen also when you travel in a train if there is a train crossing you from the other side from the opposite direction that train seems to be moving really fast which may not be the case that train may be, you might be in a 50 km per hour train and the train coming from the opposite direction is only 30 km per hour but it will seem to you that that train is coming to you at 80 because for you you are constant your speed is you are not moving for you you will feel that you are stationary and hence that train will seem to be coming to you at 80 km per hour similarly if a person is sitting in this train here for him also, the train coming from the opposite direction will seem to be coming at 80 km per hour because for him, he is stationary. Okay, So that is what is relative speed if bodies are moving in opposite direction. Let's see if they are moving in the same direction. Then the same example will just vary a bit of data here. Okay, And we will say that both these trains now are traveling from the same side okay so we have both these trains traveling from the same side so in one hour a will cover a distance of 50 a 
and there is a train B also which is at a speed of 30 km per hour. So B will cover a distance of 30. Now the gap between these two trains will be 20 km. So relative to each other the trains have covered a distance of only 20 km. So train B which is a slower train that will see train A 20 km ahead of us ahead of it. So it will see plus 20 whereas train A which is here that will see train B 20 km behind it. So if A assumes itself to be stationary it will say that train B is 20 km behind it. Train B will say that train A is 20 km ahead of me. So relative to each other one train is 20 km ahead or one train is 20 km behind that does not matter but the distance between them is 20 and that is where this value of 20 comes from. Okay, so I hope we are clear this much. Of course, we'll do some questions and then this will get more and more clear. Okay, let's move on and apply this in some questions. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a standard set of data and through this we'll solve a lot of questions so that we are clear with all parts. We'll assume there's a train A which has a length. Train will have a length of its own, right? Engine and certain coaches attached. There's a train B. There's the length and speed. There's a car. Now, length of a car is negligible compared to a train. Hence, we have not considered any length for a car. Similarly, a man will have negligible length, but they will have speed. Car and man will have the speed. A platform, platform obviously will not move, so it will not have a speed, but it will have a length. There's a bridge, which again will have a length, but no speed. Okay, so we same data and we'll solve multiple questions here. Now, you know that time taken Okay, time taken is equal to distance upon speed. Now, this is the only formula or the only concept that you are going to use. Okay, this speed, of course, will become relative speed wherever required. That's the only variation. Instead of speed, you will take relative speed if there are two bodies in motion. Otherwise, that is the concept. Okay, so the first question in how much time train A will cross an electric pole? not electric pole, sorry, electric pole. Okay, so in how much time train A will cross an electric pole? Okay, now if you imagine this is the pole. Okay, train starts crossing from here. This is the engine of the train. And when the last bogey of the train crosses, we say that the train has crossed. So the timer starts from here and the timer ends here. Okay, so essentially what is getting crossed is the whole length of the train, right? the whole length of the train has to cross the electric pole. This is the start and this is the finish. Start when the engine touches the pole, touches matlab is uh, in the same line and ends when the last bogey crosses. Okay, so in that case, obviously my distance should be length of the train, which is 200 meters and speed should be speed of the train, no relative speed because electric pole is a constant. Okay, so it will be 108 kilometers per hour, but I can't take kilometers per hour. So 108 will be how much? 108 into 5 by 18. So this is 6, 6 into 5. So this I should also write here 30 meters per second. Okay, so 200 upon 30 or 20 by 3 or 6, 2 by 3 seconds. This will be the answer for the first question. Okay. Second question, in how much time train B will cross a tree? Tree again, same as a pole is constant. What is the speed? 72, 72 into 5 by 18. This is 4, 5 into 4 is 20 meters per second. Okay, so 300 is the length of train B upon 20 meters per second. Hence, it will take 15 seconds. So, answer will be 15 seconds. In how much time will train A cross the platform? Now, platform crossing is slightly different. See here. Let's say this is the platform. Okay. This is my platform. Okay. Now, train starts crossing from here. Okay. So, my timer starts from here and it will be counted till the last coach has crossed that means till here right so your timer will start from here when the 
engine is in direct line with the start of the platform and end when the last coach has crossed the platform that means the engine would have moved here so obviously you look engine to engine right or you look last bogey to last bogey that is the total time so this total time is what i am taking and if you see the length here the length here is length of the platform and length of the train both are being taken right so distance which is my numerator now the distance in this case when it is a length object will become uh, train a so 200 plus platform which is 360 okay so time taken is distance upon speed same concept but distance now is distance of the train which is length of the train plus length of the platform upon platform again is a constant it doesn't move so uh, speed will be 30 so you will get 560 upon 30 or 56 by 3 which will give you 18 2 by 3 seconds so it's going to take 18 2 by 3 seconds okay how much time train b will take to cross the bridge same concept assume that this is the bridge so it will be bridge plus the train so it will be train b is 300 meters plus bridge is 500 meters train b has a speed of 20 so it is 800 upon 20 it is 40 seconds okay so here time is 40 seconds okay so all these questions all these four questions we have taken only stationary items if you see uh, stationary point items or stationary length items these two are called point items hence we did not consider length for them these two are length items hence we have considered length from them so the only part of this formula which has got impacted is distance okay so first two questions we took only length of the train in third and fourth question we took length of the train plus platform or length of the train plus length of the bridge okay let's look at next four questions where now they are crossing some moving objects okay so in how much time train a will cross the man if they are moving in the same direction now when two bodies are moving also you need information about their direction so they are moving in the same direction okay and if you remember we had written down the value i'll just copy those values 30 20 so this was 30 meters per second this was 20 meters per second 5 by 18 will be 10 meters per second and 9 by 18 will mine will be 2.5 meters per second okay so these are the speeds in meter per second okay and if you remember the formula my time taken was distance upon relative speed okay now in the first case this is a man a man has negligible length hence he will not impact the length so the length will be length of the train and it is train a so my time taken will be 200 upon relative speed now and both of them are moving in the same direction what did we learn about same direction same direction the speed gets subtracted so it is speed of train a which is 30 minus speed of the man which is 2.5 right same direction you subtract right so 200 upon 27.5 or 200 upon 55 by 2 right that's what you get so cancelling by 5 it is 11 it is 40 so 80 by 11 or 7 3 by 11 seconds that will be the answer right next question train b crosses the car opposite direction okay so again car we have assumed it to be of negligible uh, length so length of the train only so it is train b now so 300 upon speed of the train which is 20 and opposite direction so it will get added and car has a speed of 10 so it is 300 upon 30 so it will be 10 meters 10 seconds is what it will take okay so here you can see man and car negligible length so only speed is getting impacted and relative speed so in the same direction we are subtracting them when they are opposite direction we are adding them okay fine 
in how much time train A and B will cross each other if they are moving in the same direction. Okay, now both the trains. So when both the trains are there, they both have length. So I'll have to take length of both of them. So this will become 200 plus 300 is the distance. And the relative speed, same direction. So you'll subtract. So 30 is the faster one, 30 minus 20. So it will be 500 upon 10. It is going to be 50 seconds. Always see that in fact it will take much more time for them to cross each other when they are moving in the same direction. Okay, because the relative speed is only 10. So the faster train is crossing the slower one by only 10 meters per second. Okay, so obviously it's going to take more time. Whereas if they are in opposite direction, both of them want to cross each other. So both of them are helping. Okay, whereas here, a wants to cross, B doesn't want to let it cross, so B is also chasing. Okay, so here in the fourth question, the numerator is same, 200 plus 300 upon, but now they are in opposite direction, so it is 30 plus 20. Now 30 plus 20 does not matter, you take 30 plus 20 or 20 plus 30, so it will be 500 upon 50. They will cross each other only in 10 seconds. Okay. So we have taken all variations. We took point object, we took point stationary object, we took point moving object, we took length stationary object, we took length moving object. So all four cases we have taken uh, two two questions on each of them so that you are clear with each case. Now let's complicate this a bit. And now let's say the the man is inside the train. <laughs> okay, this man is moving towards the engine in train A. Okay, then in how much time train A and B will cross each other if they are moving in the same direction? If the man is moving inside the engine. Okay, so first thing is man is moving towards the engine. Man is moving inside the train towards the engine. But still train A and B have to cross each other. So man has no role here. Train A and B have to cross each other. So the answer would remain same. Answer is 200 plus 300 upon. They are in the same direction. So 30 minus 20. This we had solved already. So 500 by 10, which is 50 seconds. Okay. Let's change this question a bit. In how much time train man is moving inside train A? So in how much time, I'll just rewrite this, will train B cross the man? Okay, let's look at this question now. If the man is moving towards the engine in train A, then in how much time will train B cross the man? Okay, if they are moving in the same direction. Okay, now imagine what is happening. This is train A going at a speed of, this was how much? 30 meters per second. Inside is the man. He is moving towards the engine. That means in the same direction as in which the train is moving. And he is moving at a speed of two and a half kilometers, two and a half meters per second. Okay, now there is one very interesting point here. Now, what is the actual speed of the man? What is the actual speed of the man? And a lot of people tell me that it will be 30 minus 2.5, 27.5 because both of them are in the same directions. Hence, it should be subtracted. But no. Understand here that in relative speed, when you take these speeds, when you take all these speeds which are given, these are absolute speeds, right? These are absolute speeds. That means speed relative to something which is not moving. Okay, so if there is a person sitting on the platform, he will see train A moving at a speed of 30 meters per second, train B at a speed of 20 meters per second, okay, car at 10 meters per second and this at 2.5 meters per second. Now this speed of the person, is it his absolute speed when he is inside the train? 
No. If he is walking on the road at this speed, then it is his absolute speed. But now that I have put him inside the train and he is moving towards the engine at this speed, his absolute speed. See, just imagine this scenario. Even if this person was not moving in the train, he is sitting in the train, sitting stationary. But is his actual speed absolute speed zero? No, he will be moving at the speed of the train, right? So his absolute speed of anyone inside the train is same as the speed of the train. If there is someone sitting outside and he watches this person, he will see the person crossing him at the same speed at which the train crosses him. So the absolute speed of any person inside the train who is stationary is same as speed of the train, thirty meters per second. And this person is further moving at a speed of two and a half meters per second towards the engine, so he is actually adding to the speed. So his absolute speed actually is thirty-two point five meters per second. And you might get confused here: why are we adding when they are in the same direction and not subtracting? We are subtracting, but first the absolute speed of the man is thirty-two point five. The absolute speed of the train is thirty. And hence, the relative speed of the man is thirty-two point five minus thirty, which is two point five. Understand this very carefully. So, the relative speed of the man with relation to the train. Now, if you assume the train to be stationary, then the person is moving at a speed of two point five. So, he is moving at a speed two point five meters per second faster than the train. in some time i'm sure you can visualize he will actually reach the engine and he will cross the engine right so obviously if he can cross the engine that means he is moving faster than the train because train speed to anyway is adding to his speed so his relative speed is 2.5 meters per second compared to the train that means he is moving faster than the train because he is adding 2.5 meters per second on his own Okay, so I hope that is clear. So when I say that the man is inside the train, then his absolute speed is not two two point five meters per second. His absolute is thirty two point five meters, thirty two point five meters per second. Okay, fine. Now let's come to the question. So forget train A. Look at this person. So the man has a speed of thirty two point five meters per second, and train B is in the same direction at a speed of. Twenty meters per second. Okay. Now, in how much time train B will cross the man? Now, because it is the man, his length is negligible, so you don't have to consider his length. You will consider only length of train B. So that will be three hundred upon relative speed, same direction. So you will subtract thirty-two point five minus twenty. So it will be three hundred upon twelve point five. Or three hundred upon twenty-five by two. This is twelve into two. It is twenty-four seconds. Okay, so train B will cross the man in twenty-four seconds. Got it? Very very important concept. Okay, what if this person is not moving towards the engine, but moving towards the End. This person is moving towards the end in train A. That means he is actually moving in this direction at a speed of two point five meters per second. Now his speed will be lesser than that of the train, right? Because he is moving slower than the train. So actually his speed will be now twenty seven point five thirty minus two point five. His speed is actually he. Now very interesting part. When he is moving back, net net will he be moving forward or will he be moving back? The train is taking him ahead at thirty. He is moving back at two point five. Net net he still be moving ahead, right? At a speed of twenty seven point five. This concept we'll use in boats and cisterns. Okay, so this is like a stream. This is a river. The river is flowing at thirty in this direction. You are swimming at 2.5 in this direction, but you are not strong enough as the river. So the river will still take you in this direction, but not at 30, but 27.5 because 2.5 you are cancelling. So now the person is still moving ahead, but at a speed of 27.5. Okay, so then the time taken will be same question. 
Now, if you have to answer, it will be 300 upon 27.5 minus 20. Right? So, accordingly, you can get the answer. Okay. Next question, in how much time will train A and B cross each other if they are moving in opposite direction? This we already did in the previous page. Okay. And the last one, a train is traveling at a speed of 100 kilometers, crosses a stationary man in 16 seconds. This again we have done. Uh, just to practice this again, how much time will it? The only thing is, here we have asked you length of the train. All the questions that I did so far, we gave you length and speed and I wanted you to calculate time. But obviously, any two variables you know, third variable you can find out, right? So here, we know that time taken is equal to distance upon speed. So time taken is given to you as 16 seconds. Distance, I don't know. Distance will be length of the train because it's a man and man is stationary. So length is negligible. And 108 kilometers per hour, which you know is 30 meters per second, right? So 30. So obviously length is going to be 13 to 16, 480 meters. Right? So that is going to be the answer. So I took all these variations so that you are clear with this. Please pause, rewind and do this again so that we are absolutely clear in our head. Whenever we take here speed, distance upon relative speed. Now remember relative speed you calculate by adding or subtracting absolute speeds. Okay. And what is an absolute speed? Absolute speed is speed which is seen by a person who is outside that reference. In fact, it's a physics concept. Actually, there's nothing like absolute speed because the earth itself is moving, right? So even though right now you are sitting, I'm sitting, we're still moving, but assume the earth to be stationary, assume everyone to be stationary. Then from someone who is outside the frame of reference, what is the speed? So this person, this man and the train both are in the same frame of reference. Put a person outside, say someone is sitting uh, outside and he's watching the train pass by. So he'll see the man uh, at what speed that becomes the person's actual absolute speed. Okay, so that's how this will be done.